Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Atkelar. I consider this video a follow-up to the PC1 restoration. When I was looking for it on eBay, I came across this DM602, a green monochrome monitor of the era. It goes well with the PC1 using the video port. The monitor was sold as not working for parts with the note that it does not turn on. Ok, ok, challenge accepted. Inspecting the backside. Well, there's your problem. Or at least one of your problems. One of the adjustment pots was bent and stuck inside the case. The outside of the case looked clean and not at all yellowed, so I figured it would look like that on the inside too. Boy was I ever wrong! The inside looked like a smoking lounge, all coated with yellow sticky gunk. Yeah. I did not bother to try turning it on, as I wanted to recap it anyway. But before I started with that, some really heavy cleaning was called for. Isopropyl worked very well, acetone worked somehow, but nothing else would even so much as touch that yellow film. I used quite a few q-tips and paper towels to get the inside clean enough to touch without getting stuck. The monitor is actually a rebadged Philips BM7500 series and the service manual was readily available. So I had an easy job getting replacement caps. Well, except for one bipolar cap. It requires 100V rating, but it only was available at 50V. I went for a trick when replacing bipolar electrolytics. Apparently you can use a reverse series combination of regular electrolytics to achieve the same result. Use at your own risk. The potentiometers got an extra good cleaning with contact spray. I twiddled them back and forward a couple of dozen times to loosen up whatever gunk might have collected there. I even desoldered the ones for the front panel, opened them up to give them a good cleaning and some new grease. It turns out that the RCA plugs for the video and audio were broken too. They peeled off some of the copper of the PCB. I cleaned them up and resoldered them as good as possible, slightly bending over the legs for better mechanical advantage.
Now that everything was ready, I reassembled the monitor, the tube, neck board, high voltage anode, ground wires, Alas, the moment of truth! Power on! At first I did not connect any input, I just turned it on to check the individual voltages to make sure the power supply side was working properly. 12 volts, 20 volts, 25 volts, minus 105 volts, 60 volts, 560 volts. I don't have a meter for the anode voltage, but the manual also doesn't say how much that should be. Let's assume it's ok. To provide a simple input for checking the picture, I hooked up my C64. Well, no picture. I measured signals left, right and center, starting with the deflection coils and narrowing down where the signal gets lost between the input and the CRT. During these measurements, I accidentally brushed against the neck board. And as luck would have it, my knuckles came into contact with exactly two pins. Ground and plus 560 volts. Ouch! That smarts! Well, a few adjustments later and I finally see a picture. Woohoo! It is slightly slanted, but that is to be expected. Adjusting the deflection coils next and twiddling knobs to get the picture aligned properly. Now that everything is adjusted, it's time to button things up. And here it is, the PC1 with a proper period monitor. Maybe I can get a color CRT too? Well, eventually, maybe. And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this little restoration. See you next time! by slightly bending over the legs to provide a better mechanical advantage. Nope. Almost. <clears throat>